How's it going, everybody? Rudy here. It is time. Wizards of the Coast has released a band of restricted announcement as of a couple days ago. I know I'm late. But for those of you that don't know, I am a huge fan of Magic the Gathering. And just recently, I have won this. A ticket, or a representation of a ticket, where I won a local RCQ. Some of you also know that I won one last season as well and participated in DreamHack Dallas. A fantastic time, by the way. I have a whole video about it. Anyways, that's enough waiting. Let's jump right into it. I need to figure out uh, what they did. So, BNR, banned and restricted. All right, so here we have it. We have Modern Preordain is unbanned. Um, I don't have a lot of experience playing Modern. I mostly play Pioneer, at least since I came back into the game in a competitive sense. And then Legacy, I don't know anything about that, but Mind's Desire looks like a sweet card. Um, interesting. He didn't ban anything in Pioneer. That kind of sucks. Let's see, uh, Pioneer Legacy Vintage. Okay, so the Pioneer metagame continues to have a widespread of play styles and archetype representation from tournament to tournament. While there are known pillars in Mono Green and Rakdos variants, if that is the truth, I don't know what is, and creature-centric aggro decks, their metagame shares rise and fall at a healthy clip. Recently, new versions of Lotus Field Control have gotten some extra attention, but it's at but its win rate and metagame share sit about where we would expect any reasonable deck to fall. Without a clear top dog or unanswerable archetype pushing other decks out, we've elected not to change at this time. Oh. Boy, oh boy, that sounds uh, like it's going to be a grand old time for the next few months while we prepare. I am so sick of running into Mono Green, but unfortunately, uh, I'm going to have to deal with it up to Dreamhack Atlanta at least, I'm sure. I know that I'll be pivoting to Modern in order to participate in more RCQs, but uh, I live in a very rural area, so a lot of people have to travel like two, three... Uh, even up to like five or six hours to get to get somewhere to play in an RCQ. So people are going to play what's, you know, popular, or what, what's the best. And so we get a lot of like mono green, uh, sack dose and control around here without a lot of variation. I know uh, personally when I won uh, just this most recent one, I was playing five color jelly bean. And so I'll be sticking to that because I just find that to be an interesting deck. It is very disappointing to hear them say that they're not going to ban anything from Pioneer. Uh, let's just take a look here. Depending on your sources or which website you use, it you know it'll change up who's the top dog. But uh, for the Pioneer metagame here, the top ten decks are generally the same. They're just switched around a little bit. Looks like we have Nykthos Ramp, Rakdos Sacrifice, and Azori Spirits kind of taking the top, which is exactly what I would expect. Our personal meta is a lot of those decks, plus we have a, a lot of control players around where I'm at. And then, you know, splashing a few Grease Fang here and uh, one creati creativity deck there. It's pretty much within that top 10. I'm glad to see that Rakdos is chilling out a little bit. I've been on Rakdos since last season, and that's what I took to Dallas, and ultimately got crushed by mono green players and honestly i would still be on rakdos if it wasn't for one of my friends that wanted to play and he feigns as a control player but he's actually a mid-range player so we're like here try this and he's been having a lot of success with it he actually took fourth place in that tournament that i won and i burst him in the top four so it was a pretty intense situation luckily the jelly bean got me there I got a lot of love for the deck, but I acknowledge the fact that when a mid-range deck is on top, there's probably some more work or some workarounds that can happen in the meta. Even my jelly bean, you can see him hanging around just right around this area. The point is, there's not going to be a shift, so training up to this December when DreamHack Atlanta goes, we're going to have to be really knowledgeable about the meta and like certain ways to counter certain decks, etc. Now, personally, I don't know if I'm going to be sticking with the deck that I have chosen, which is this five-color mid-range jelly bean deck. Now, having a pile of five-color good stuff is not necessarily bad. It's just also not necessarily good. Uh, the consistency just isn't there for a lot of stuff, but I enjoy it, so that's why I play it. And, uh, of course, this is the deck that I've chosen, not this exact variation of it. I like to have a little bit more spice in the sideboard. I don't like just throwing four bank busters in there. I like having... Um, 
access to some silver bullets. Like I have Blood Baron in the side. I have Saruk in the side. I have just these like big five mana bombs that come out, uh, Scarab God, things like that to really help mitigate some of the harder matchups. Otherwise, I let the nerds do the math as far as the mana base. I just copy that and then throw in the, the staples, of course, because if you're running the Bring to Light package, then you should be running like Valky and you should be running Selfless Glyph Weaver. That way you just have like these super, super awesome bombs that you can drop super early, especially if you wrap up to it with a carry it. Meta stuff and deck choices aside, I do really enjoy Pioneer. But Pioneer does have a big problem as far as the player who goes first has a pretty strong advantage over the player who goes second just because of the cards that we have access to we don't have all the catch-up cards that like modern does if your opponent has a really good start you don't just get to solitude them away or ferry them away or anything like that so i think we lack some of the better tools that other formats have in order to catch back up regardless of which it is my format of choice and it's the one that i'm the most invested into of course with it being the past two seasons that's what i'm playing uh played it in dallas and i'll be playing it in atlanta it's what i keep up with the most i just wish they would take a look at some of the more problematic cards and then remove them i understand like i'll be the first to say that i know that they can't touch uh mono green devotion taking away karn or nykthos without hitting fable the mirror breaker as well which i'm okay with those going Fable does make for some very uh, similar play patterns. And then, of course, Karn and Nykthos can be very oppressive at times. Sometimes they just, like, they'll have nothing going on. They'll draw one card, Storm, and then just win the game off of, like, a Karn and Nykthos activation. Though I wish they did try and remove some of the more problematic cards, I don't necessarily disagree with them not touching the format, I suppose. It is what it is, and we'll just have to wait till the next banning comes around in order to actually see if they want to do anything. But that also means that they're going to be printing cards likely in the future to help with the problems that we have now. As far as the other BNR stuff, I don't have a lot of interest in uh, Legacy. I will be playing Modern in this upcoming season, so I'll have to probably care about the preordain on banning, whatever that means for the format. But as of right now, I need to focus on DreamHack Atlanta and you know being ready for that tournament. With all of that being said, thank you guys so much for joining me, but before I go, I'd like to do a quick shout out to my Patreon. Thank you guys so much for the continued support. Without you, I don't think I would have the motivation to go in as hard as I do. I appreciate every single one of you, and I'll see you tomorrow.